Can you please explain how you would get the T equals 62 using SHR psychometric chart and without it as well? Uh, I will pass on the second part. I don't think you can do this problem without the psychometric chart. If you find a way, please let me know. Um, but I will show you how you might come at it using the psychometric chart. So let's just draw it schematically because it's more important for me to get you the concept. And then I want you to take this away and actually draw this on the actual psychometric chart. And let me know how that goes and any follow-up questions that come out of that. So in this problem, we have a situation where we have a known room condition and I'm just picking an arbitrary location. So I don't want anyone to get attached to particular numbers here. This is, a, this is my way of illustrating the concepts without worrying about the numbers. So we're gonna follow some process line for cooling down into the left. So there's cooling and dehumidification happening. And that's tracking for a location on the saturation curve that we call the ADP, the apparatus dew point. And the slope of that line is dictated by the sensible heat ratio. Another way to communicate the same information, because there used to be a protractor, and this is a question that comes up a lot, there used to be a protractor on the psychrometric chart where you could figure out the sensible heat ratio if you knew the sensible and latent load and the total load, and then you could draw a line on this protractor. And when it was paper and pencil, you could move the protractor onto the chart and draw a line that's parallel to that line. And you would know you've got exactly the right room sensible heat ratio. Um, but with the computer-based test, there's no way of doing that. You could draw a series of parallel lines. And I don't know, that sounds uh, like an uphill battle, but this problem is actually over-specified. They've given you that and they've told you that the ADP is 38. So it's also true that if you start from the room condition and you are uh, pointing directly at the ADP, by definition, you're following the room sensible heat ratio. And the load is the load. So if there's a certain amount of moisture and a certain amount of cooling to be done, the process has to follow that line. Now, the actual route that it takes to get there can be a bit different depending on the system and how it's getting it done. So I'm going to switch colors now and draw what's actually happening with this system, which is kind of unique. The system's using reheat. So um, there's a supply air condition of 52 degrees dry bulb and 51 degrees wet bulb. So if this is 38 then 52 and 51 is going to be somewhere over here, it's going to be lower than where we started. So again, we'll have a diagonal line, but not quite the same slope. It's not going to go as far down. So that's actually the cooling process that's happening initially. But now we need to reheat. So the reason for doing that is to achieve a sufficient amount of cooling, but then, uh, and, and a fair amount of dehumidification, but then we're gonna do reheat, which means we're gonna travel horizontally to the right to get back to the process line that we need to be on for the room. So now we go from there, horizontally back to the right. And hopefully that's a perfectly horizontal line. If it's not, you'll forgive me. And that's the reheat process that we just drew. So this is the room. This is the ADP. This is the supply. I'll just write the letter S there. Well, I guess it's not really the supply. It's the discharge is a better way to put it because it's the, it's the temperature right off the cooling coil discharge. And this is really the supply condition after the reheat. And the question is asking how much, uh, how much reheat is needed. And since reheat is a sensible only process, it's only sensible heating, but we do need to know the temperatures. And we knew the temperature of the discharge air because that was given in the problem statement as 52. 
but we did not know the location of this point. And there is not a way to find it except for graphically. There's not an analytical way to find out where that supply condition is. You have to draw the line from the room to the discharge. And if that's done properly and the process line is drawn properly, and then you go horizontally to the right for the reheat process, you will run into the, um, the room sensible heat ratio line, if you want to call it that. And wherever that intersection happens, that specifies the dry bulb temperature of the supply condition, which turns out in this problem to be 62. Common question, good question. It's come up before. I think it's somewhere else in my program. So you might come across a video of this exact problem. Um, but if not, I'm glad you came across it now. And uh, I hope that makes sense. And I hope you're up for figuring this out graphically. Um, I think it's good to be able to do both. If, there's an, if there was an analytical way to do it that I knew, I would gladly share it with you. But the only way I know to go on this one is graphical. It's funny, there was a problem earlier tonight where it was the exact opposite. It was a case where, I don't know if it was the same person asking, but um, looking for a graphical solution, I was saying, no, you got to use the tables. So it's really just the experience of seeing lots of different problems and knowing which ones different techniques are going to work on. So don't give up. <laughs>